Hi, good evening, everyone. Sure. So the first question is uh, about D dimer. How far is it relevant in COVID nineteen? Uh, so D dimer, you know, just as a biomarker, um, I think one thing through COVID that we've learned is clinical judgment prevails no matter what. And uh, this is a perfect time to make that point. D dimer is so non-specific that it's very difficult to just say if your D dimer is more than 200, you're going to start using TOSI. It's just one of the many things, one piece in that puzzle that can help you decide. But let's say if the D dimer is less than 200, doesn't mean I'm not going to offer it to that patient because what I'm going to take into account is how the patient has been doing with other drugs that we talked about. Like the next question is, if a person has been infected with COVID-19, can that person infect another person after seven days? See, the, it's been shown that the viral cultures have, uh, you know, shown the virus only in about up to eight days in most people. <clears throat> Having said that, it has been the general advice is from the CDC is 10 days after the onset of symptoms in mild cases. And if they are 24 hours, they are feeling better. And for severe cases, they may be because of the higher viral load, they may be more infectious and probably isolate them for 15 to 20 days. So if you are a mild case in the community in home isolation, if it is beyond seven days, the chances is very low. But if it is beyond 10 days, it's almost unlikely. Okay, thank Can you. I just add to that uh, one other piece I think that and uh, that's more relevant for our hospitalized population is also uh, if you agree that the patient that the a person who has been infected should be immunocompetent because with the immunocompromise the shedding seems to be longer and yes. they seem so uh, next question is uh, what is the role of antibodies in plasma therapy? I take this. I think it's already discussed, I think, uh, by most of the speakers right now. As far as testing is concerned, we are doing it by ELISA and the CLIA to have adequate titer of antibodies. As far as treatment is concerned, I think uh, Dr. Neha and most of the speakers have already said it is still an investigational. And uh, someone has asked about ivermectin prophylaxis. So I think uh, ivermectin prophylaxis should be given based on what we know today is if we think uh, the person is at high risk for hyperinfection with strongyloides infection, hyperinfection, because that in itself can be life-threatening, which is often accompanied by gram-negative bacteremia. You give a dose of 200 milligrams times one, or you can even give it over two days. That's where I think it's utility aid. And it's not so much for COVID as we know it today. It's more for the byproduct of that. Comment on false positive, uh, false positive antibody test for COVID-19 due to cross-reactivity with other viral diseases. Okay, I will take this. Uh, cross-reactivity with other viral diseases is, is the other coronaviruses which are non-pandemic strains may happen. And that is the reason why we are actually, you know, uh, looking at a situation where the IgM and IgG, both of them rise together, is somewhere similar to what is seen in the dengue secondary active infection, where both IgM and IgG, the rise is together. And this is because of the previous exposure to coronaviruses that has happened, which are non-pandemic nature, uh, which we already have actually four different strains, which we have been previously exposed to. So that could be the reason, you know, uh, that there could be some cross-reactivity, but that too against the non-pandemic coronaviruses, not the other uh, other uh, categories of viruses.